everybody, welcome to the inside of Old Goat Hill. Today I'm gonna to talk about um, raw milk or clean raw milk versus pasteurization milk. We use clean raw milk in-house, so anything that we use, we will use our raw milk straight from the goat, but anything we make you guys, like the cheeses or the cayeta, or anything that we basically put up on our website is through a pasteurization process. Just a quick rundown, the clean, Goat milk means your goats have been tested, they have the proper cleaning before and after their milking, and that it's strained in the proper way and stored at um, 40 degrees um, in a refrigerator. So we use a double filter system. Um, we also do, um, which is here, I can't, I'm not gonna break it down just because it's getting on the foam, which is very common in our goats. Our big, we have to wait a little bit longer for our final milk to come through. And it's a metal strainer, and then we have a non-gauze milk um, uh, filter on top of it so it goes through a double filtration system and then it goes into our mason jars um, the mason jars are then cooled to 50 degrees outside of the refrigerator and then once it hits the 50 degrees it's put into the refrigerator for 40 degrees and then we uh, use it from there on out so basically what that means is that the uh, enzymes and the proteins are all breaking down at the proper level so we won't get any of the kind of sour goaty flavor um, that sometimes I'm sure everyone has experienced with their goat milk. So we were pasteurizing um, by hand a while ago and we uh, it's, it's a very um, difficult process in the sense you got to get to a certain degree and then you got to drop it and if you don't it gets a little bit of a tangy um, taste. It doesn't taste bad but what we've noticed is that a lot of people like um, the more kind of savory goat taste instead of the bitter. So we decided to purchase a Safeguard pasteurizer. What this machine does is essentially takes out any of the questioning. So we put our milk in, we place it, and then we step away. And then once the milk has been properly pasteurized to the correct temperature, then a very loud buzzer goes on and we empty it and we cool it down to room temperature. Room temperature for anything goat related is 110 degrees. So it's actually still really warm. As a reference point, our kind of Bible around here, or one of them, which I'll go through later, is we use our uh, Merrill Winston books. Um, they're awesome, they've grown up with goats, they know everything, and we've kind of done that for our processing in the plant. So like I said, we use a Safeguard pas pa Pasteurizer, which will pasteurize two gallons of milk at a time, between 45 to an hour, depending on the temperature of the milk. Um, if for whatever reason you get busy and you have to put the milk into the refrigerator and come back at a later time, totally fine, but just know that it's going to take a longer um, period. For the best results and the quickest, you take fresh milk, which I have in four mason jars, because um, it's hard for me to measure the gallons off the top of my head, so I know four of those is two gallons, and then um, we put the milk in our pasteurizer and then we set it. Um, so it's about five pieces, so this is our safeguard pasteurizer. You do not plug it in until it is completely ready to go because the automatic heater will actually start and it'll get everything kind of warm. This is our milk jug. So this will carry the two gallons of milk. If it's less than two gallons, it's totally fine also. We just know that our max milk is gonna be two gallons. This is gonna be our top for our milk container. And then this is our kind of our sealer. So this allows the, the pot to sit in the pasteurizer correctly and then um, water completely covers the bowl, it's sealed, and then um, you put a red top on it, and then you plug it in. Once you plug it in, the pasteurization starts. So with that, we fill it up, plug it in, and then let it sit. I'm gonna show you how to fill it and put it together. Um, it's a little bit tricky in the beginning because you have to make sure you get these two brackets to seal it, and then it takes a while for the water to fill because they want you to use um, this hose. What the hose does is it goes into the pasteurizer and you basically put it in the on your faucet and it goes in. Word to advise, make sure you wear short sleeves or you have a good angle on your hose or else you're gonna get very wet. The final hose comes with a stopper which goes on the bottom. The stopper goes on one side and then the other side um, will connect into your pasteurizer. What that does is that allows, once the pasteurization is finished and the water is really hot, then it can safely drain. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how I put it together and then turning it on, and then um, once it's all done, I'll bring you guys on back, okay? Okay. 
You want it snug. If you're having a problem with the, the plastic, you can always put warm water around this and it'll help get it on. You want it to be nice and snug. Next, we're gonna take our milk container and we're gonna pour our two gallons of freshly milked uh, goat milk into our container. So that's... This milk was done about, uh, I'd say like 15 minutes ago, probably like 10 minutes ago, um, and I strained it, and now it's ready to be pasteurized. So it is have that nice warm temperature, um, and this is our clean goat, raw goat milk. All right, so that's our two gallons. Um, for point of reference, it's about two inches from the top. You're gonna place it into your pasteurizer. Like I said, making sure the brackets are set. You're gonna take your milk top. You're gonna put your milk top on. Now this is kind of the tricky part. So what makes it secure is this little ball. So you have to make sure the ball is in the middle. And then you essentially just do a circular rotation until you see the seal. Together, this is the hardest part is make sure that that white ball is set and then do a little motion to get under the brackets and it tends to just kind of take a little bit but it'll it'll work a lot better During the filling process, if you notice your milk stand is a car starting to float, it means you're not in the brackets and you have not sealed the top. So just stop where you're at and refix the top. There should be no seal along the white ball and then also it should be completely still once the water because the water's got to come up all the way over it, okay? Or just because there's a little hole and if the water goes too fast it'll, it'll spill out, isn't a big deal, just more of a mess to clean up. One of the things I notice when I fill it with it in, even though it goes faster because of gravity, at the very end when you pull it out you lose probably about a half an inch, so you want to just hold it. And fill it a little bit more controlled. is completely full. Now you're going to put your top on, make sure it's sealed, and you're going to turn it on. When you turn it on, it automatically goes to the heat, so you're not going to have to worry about um, figuring out the temperature. Per the, the manual, every two months you want to stick a cooking thermometer in here, which has a little hole, and make sure it, it's... Okay, so it went really fast today, but now you hear the buzzer. So you unplug it, and now you need to cool it. So this is what this hose is for. The water is very hot, so be careful. And you let it come out. See the steam? Put that there. Now you're gonna put the same hose in. And instead of running the hot water, you're gonna run it as cold as water as possible. Okay, so that was a way to pasteurize it per the manual that comes in if you have the time. Um, we have a lot going on at Old Goat Hill. We're actually in the process of building a new milking station because um, we have more babies on the way. So we actually incorporate an ice cream maker to help cool our pasteurized milk down to the 110. And then what will happen is then it will go to the 50 to the 40 and then stored to make all your guys' good cheeses and everything else that we provide for you. So. The ice cream maker is a one gallon ice cream maker, so we pasteurize two gallons, so we have to do it in two steps. 
I'm gonna show you the last one gallon. Um, this is not gonna harden or anything, so you actually can fill it past the uh, fill line. We use a Hamilton ice cream maker, and then I have my uh, handy dandy cooking thermometer just to double check. Um, what's cool about the ice cream maker is you can set it and go, so I can do a couple other things while it's going. Um, I'm just gonna show you how we set it up and what it's going for, and then you guys can take what you want from this video and use a pasteurizer. You can still do the, the uh, old school way, the home pasteurizing if you have the time. And then uh, whether you wanna cool it with just an, a traditional ice bath or you can uh, spend a little uh, extra dollars and get a at-home ice cream maker that uh, can help cool it so you can do multi things because all of us have busy schedules, okay? So I'm gonna take our warm pasteurized milk and put it into the ice cream container. We can't use the same container, unfortunately, because um, the way it sits in the ice cream maker. The biggest thing when transitioning is uh, we notice that it gets really hot. So part of the thing that we're gonna do from here on out is we're just gonna pasteurize a gallon at a time and that way it, it has less of an issue. There's already water in it because I, um, I just did a batch, um, but so you put the, the, you know, the mover in it, the shaker in the mover, and then you set it in. So be careful if it's hot. Also be careful of the leaking water. So ours is a little tall, so it gets wet, but quick cleanup because it's just water. And then you're going to place it in. Put the ice cream container on top and then turn it on. This is allowing the milk to move and cool while we're doing it, okay? So I'm going to let it go for about five to ten minutes and then I'll come in and I'll put it in our mason jars and I'll be ready to make all your guys' products. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video on how to pasteurize and um, I will post some more videos on making the products and a couple other things we got going on on Old Willow Hill today. But I hope you guys have a great Tuesday and I'll catch you on the flip side. Bye!